So coming up on Sunday, we have a big matchup, which I discussed yesterday. And in this video, I want to focus more on the Justin Fields aspect of this game. Clearly, it's going to be a big matchup for both Jordan Love and Justin Fields, two young quarterbacks taking over their organizations in the past. I mean, Justin Fields the past couple of years, Jordan Love, this of course being his first season. And if we look at Justin Fields, the one area that I'm most concerned about in this game is him as a runner. He was one of the best last year, 160 attempts, 1,143 yards and eight rushing touchdowns. The passing game was a completely different story. He was not good. PFF passing grade, 36th. PFF passing grade under pressure, 36th. PFF passing grade when blitzed, 41st. Completion percentage, 34th. Yards per attempt, tied for 17th. Passer rating, 27th. And he was the most sacked quarterback in the entire NFL. So you look at those two categories, there's no doubt he was a much better rusher than passer last year. And I think the Bears do want to see him elevate and become more of a passer. You don't want your quarterback taking as many hits as Justin Fields took last season. And so if he can become a better passer, that also you know keeps him a little safer in the running game. And of course, adding DJ Moore, that was the Bears, um, I guess, plan to elevate Justin Fields as a passer because they thought to themselves, well, he hasn't had an elite weapon. He hasn't had an elite wide receiver. And so maybe that could solve some of the issues here for Justin Fields. Here's the thing. I, I do think that adding DJ Moore, of course, that's going to help Fields. Having an elite number one wide receiver should make him a better passer overall. But still, I don't think that adding DJ Moore is going to make Justin Fields even a top 15 passing quarterback in the NFL. When he, when you know, reading the stats that I read about him last season, also looking at, let's look at his total 17 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. I don't think that he's going to suddenly become a top 10 passing quarterback in the league just because you add DJ Moore. And so I think if you're the Packers, Planning for this game, you'd have to be much more concerned about Justin Fields as a runner as opposed to him as a passer. And I was watching the last time the Packers played the Bears, which was, I think, week... It was either week 13 or 14, early December last year. It was actually a pretty close game a majority of the day. The Packers ended up pulling off the victory 28-19. to But the Bears almost came back. I think there were three or four minutes left. Bears down 19-20. Justin Fields had an opportunity to come down and put the Bears up. He did throw an interception to Jair Alexander. But a majority of that game, Fields played somewhat solid. He didn't have a passing touchdown, but he threw for, I think, 200-plus yards in that game. The Packers' passing defense didn't look incredible versus Justin Fields. But there was one important play that I think the Packers need to try to limit this game coming in on Sunday, and that was, I think it was a read option, where Fields ran for a 55-yard touchdown. The defensive linemen did not you know, fill the gaps as they should. The linebackers and Quay Walker and Devondre Campbell came down, got blocked outside. There was a huge wide open hole for Justin Fields. And that's what we can't have on Sunday. This has been a very poor Packers running defense for years and years. And even if we look at the Packers against quarterbacks last year, they were 26 in rushing yards allowed to QBs. So that is definitely a weakness on this Packers team. And I would not be surprised to see the Bears try to take advantage of that because until the Packers prove and show that they can you know, stop the run, stop running backs, stop running quarterbacks. I think teams are going to try to target them in that area as they rightly should. And so the, I think the, um, to, for the Packers to find success in this game, they need to limit Justin Fields as a runner, which comes down to the defensive lineman, you know, keeping contained, which comes down to Quay Walker and Devondra Campbell, keeping an eye on him as they are sitting back in coverage, making sure that if he does break away from the pocket to get there as quickly as possible, because Fields has that elite speed, and if you give him too big of a cushion, he can pick up 8 to 10 yards in a hurry. And so we need we need to consistently stop that. And if we can stop that and force them to be one-dimensional in the passing game, even though this is an improved offensive line, Justin Fields, as I said earlier, was the most sacked QB in the, in the NFL. And so I think with Rashawn Gary back, even though he probably will be on a snap count, with Preston Smith there, J.J. and Agbari taking a second-year leap with uh, Devontae Wyatt, who I think could be really good against the passer this season. I think that the Packers should be able to get consistent pressure on fields. And if they can stop the run, clearly that's going to make fields one dimensional in the passing game. And I think that if you force them to pass, <laughs> I do believe that the Packers can force some turnovers in this game. So it will be a good test for this Packers defense to see what they can do against a elite rushing quarterback. And we'll see, maybe Justin Fields takes that next step forward as a passer but I wouldn't be so sure. So we'll see. It'll be a fun game coming up on Sunday. If you want to see my full breakdown of this game, I did it yesterday on this channel. So feel free to check that out. But feel free to comment your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all things Packers. But that is all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.